When I made my last Persona 5 scramble video, the one thing I really wanted to highlight was that it seems a lot more like Persona 5 in many more ways than expected. That, however, was hard to do, as most of the footage available was from the action portion of the game that gives the opposite impression. And while I'm happy with the information I shared in that video, I feel like there's more information out now that makes a case for Persona 5 scramble having a heavy RPG element as well as an action one. So with that in mind, I was very happy with the recent Abima TV livestream that showed a lot more of the real world gameplay that shows where we can actually see more of that Persona 5 feel in action. And I really wanted to show that off as it was streamed over a service that most people in the West don't use. So on that note, let's take a look at the new gameplay and recent updates about Atlas and Koei Tecmo's upcoming action RPG collaboration Persona 5 Scramble. the November 29th traveling Morgana Sushin highlighting Scrambles area of Sendai, the Abema TV livestream on the 29th decided to show off more of the area, which gave us that first proper look of the daily life portion of the game. With the Japanese voice actor for Joker, Jun Fukuyama at the controller, we got to see what it would be like to run through one of the cities during the daytime, and since I've been playing a little bit of Persona 5 Royal recently, it was cool to see that this exploration portion was a lot like playing through the first game. The UI is almost identical identical, with all the icons for talk and check coming up on the screen, and plenty of other things that are the same, like the text bubbles in the map, along with the actual gameplay of running around, talking to people, and then triggering dialogue options. While there's plenty that resembles Persona 5, there are a few new things to spot as well. The party members are marked on the map this time, which makes a lot of sense considering we'll be exploring a lot of unfamiliar environments and therefore don't know the character's favorite spots this time. Then there's also the camper van that seems like it will be a part of gameplay in some way, as there was this interesting moment in the stream when Fukuyama excitedly entered the car, the producer Daisuke Kaneda quickly asked him to exit, which probably just means it's not ready to be used yet, but it also had a menu option to enter dungeons, so I guess it could mean that we actually head to the new dungeons via the car. Another minor thing that caught my eye on that menu was that there also seems to be a cooking option, which with the group visiting so many places in Japan that have their own unique foods and dishes makes a lot of sense. So I hope this will be a part of the final game as I'd love to see Persona's take on a cooking mechanic, especially since I loved the bento making in Persona 4 Golden. Outside of the familiar UI and the new car mechanics, we did also see Ren running around town as you would in Persona 5, and despite this game being set in new locations, in Sendai was a presumably franchised location of Big Bang Burger, along with plenty of other shops to visit on the map and the Velvet Room to keep that familiar feeling, with the latter being something we've also been able to see more of in a recent Morgana Sushin that will have the Persona fusion we're used to by the sounds of things. We're still yet to hear about other Persona staples such as confidant ranks, although with the characters on the map, maybe there's a possibility of their inclusion. Either way, seeing the real world as Scramble in this way makes it look more familiar to the Persona player for sure. And with so many characters to talk to and things to check out in these unfamiliar cities, I'm looking forward to exploring these areas of Japan that I don't know in the final game. Last livestream, Kaneda was cagey about the existence of palaces in Persona 5 Scramble. However, this time it was actually explained that palaces per se won't be in Scramble and instead are replaced by these jails, which will be dungeons of a bigger scope, which may have something to do with the name change. As for the jails themselves, we've seen plenty of action gameplay from them at this point, but there were a few new mechanics shown showing how you can take advantage of the field, including a cool moment where Joker uses a skateboard to burst into a horde of enemies that look looks very stylish and cool. And seeing gameplay from this stream and more recent sources shows plenty of these elements that can do different things, from shooting cannons to letting you use the field to move around faster, and even snowboarding in most recent footage, which gives a variety of ways to explore and use each environment. Another new part of battles they showed was the way that they're involving Futaba in battle, which are hacking battles where as Futaba hacks into something, you protect her from enemies that can interrupt her. I know these kind of protection missions are 
are common in action games and were even present in Koei Tecmo's Attack on Titan game I played mid this year. And in that game, I didn't mind them, and depending on the mission, they can be quite enjoyable. What concerns me as a Futaba fan, though, is how little they seem to be doing with her since all the other characters are getting these cool character trailers and movesets, and I would be bummed if this is the only thing Futaba gets as a focus. It is early days, of course, and I'm glad there's a variety of mission types at least, but the Futaba involvement in this mission didn't really excite me as how I hoped it would, so I hope we get a Futaba trailer soon that shows us how she's more involved in some way, but on a more positive note, these battles do look like a quick way to rack up XP. As for other characters, Yusuke got showed off a fair bit in the Abuma stream since it was around the time his character trailer was releasing, and I really do like the look of his gameplay in particular, with his swords and daggers making him look really fast and fun to use, and his showtime looks really good as well. While they did show other characters' showtime such as Joker and Morgana's and other characters can be seen in their respective trailers, I came to really like Yusuke's one in the stream as the stylish and graceful look really suits his character. They all look good though, and we're still awaiting a character trailer from Makoto and Futaba at the moment, so I look forward to seeing how more characters play, but the variety added to gameplay does make it all look good. There were a few other tidbits of information that didn't really fit neatly together in a category, so instead, I compiled a few dot points in a quick take style for any other information I thought was interesting. A few new characters have been shown to fit into the Sendai part of the story, including a light novel writer, Natsume Ango, who seems to have something to do with the Sendai jail. There's also a woman called Kuon Ichinose, who apparently has a one-sided conversation with the thieves at a beef tongue restaurant all about beef tongue, which sounds interesting to say the least. Those were the only two I was going to talk about, but then another Morgana Sushin dropped, which showed one more new character called Marikyo Hyodo, who is a popular politician in that area. While she has popularity, apparently her popularity seems somewhat unusual, so as the light novel writer in Sendai has something to do with the jail in that area, I do wonder if she'll have something to do with Sapporo's. Moving on from that, weapons seem to be purchasable from Sophia's cute looking shop. She's being compared to Persona 5 Royals Joe say before, and seeing her shop was actually the first time I got that vibe, just from the UI, as both of their shops have gorgeous looking ones that really show off the innocent vibe of each of them, and the cute UI of the shop is something I find really aesthetically pleasing and makes me want to try it. A few other points were that the main character will be nameable, like in Persona 5. Dungeons seem to have their own checkpoints, which will help with better saving. There seems to be treasure on the map, which might be skill cards, if the latest Morgana Sushin is anything to go by, along with new load screens, and I I think I saw that your characters still level up on the field as they traditionally would, but then it looks like the new band system will have something to do with more specific upgrades, and the latest Morgana Sushin also showed that battles are where you can pick up personas as well. And one more thing I nearly forgot to mention was that there's going to be a master art system, which looks like it'll unlock skills as battle progresses in a combo based style that reminds me a little of the Yakuza games. Finally, one more significant piece of information that may have accidentally been revealed during the stream is that there may be a sixth location in the game, as Kanada has hinted in the past. The special edition comes with a towel that they had on hand in the stream, and features themed Morganas representing each place on it. Those towels had the five places we know are in Scrambled, and are showed on the promotional poster, with the promotional material usually having a folded part, but in person and with that part unfolded thanks to Jun Fukuyama, we can see that Kyoto is written on the towel with its own themed Morgana. This may have been something planned for reveal at a later date, considering it's actually on the towel, so I'm sure we can await proper details at that time. But while the reveal may have been accidental, Kyoto makes so much sense to have in Scramble as a highly popular area in the country, and would almost have been weirder not to be in it. So if this does get revealed at a later date, I am eventually excited to see Scramble's version of it as somewhere I want to visit, and I'm curious to see how Atlas will handle the official reveal after this accidental towel one. And since this video took longer than expected to make, there managed to be a whole other live stream happen between the time I started this video and now, this time held by Dengeki with some nice full screen gameplay. I think we have a good idea of what this game is now, thanks to the generous amount of information that has been put out about this game. However, this was the first time the Sendai Jail has been showed, which did well at showing the breadth of these dungeons, along with the game's hard mode, which does look harder, as the Dengeki staff Aya, who was playing, did have to 
use a lot of healing items and quick moving for that battle. A few other points I found interesting in the Dengeki stream was the emphasis that Scramble will follow a very similar game flow to the original Persona 5, being that a situation occurs in the real world, the Phantom Thieves will explore the town and then go to the jail to dungeon crawl, which does sound very familiar. They also showed the incredibly slick menu UI for this game, and finally some dialogue from the jail, which actually is the first thing that's gotten me excited about the story. Of course I'm excited to learn more about Sophia and the world, but the scene showed had a character from the jail talking in a very manga anime, I was waiting for you heroes way, and then the thieves reacting to that and the dialogue choices related to it overall looked like a lot of fun. The adventure is supposed to be more lighthearted, and if there are more scenes like this, I'm totally for it. So while I don't want to see too much story to avoid getting spoiled, I'm glad I saw this bit as it really did get me more interested in that part of it. The press train seems to not be stopping anytime soon, with Scramble's February release date fast approaching, so I'm sure we'll hear more soon, probably regarding its other areas such as Osaka and Okinawa, and maybe even Kyoto. But in any case, from that Abema stream and the Dengeki one, these big jails and the fun looking story have me excited to keep learning more, so I'm sure we'll hear more about it soon with the traveling Morgana Sushin just having come out while I was making this too. But for now, I hope this video has helped you understand more about this interesting action RPG hybrid. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you think looks interesting about Persona 5 Scramble and if you think you'll give it a try. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below and until next time, thank you, bye!